Well, there's some interesting developments that's recently happened actually in uh, Michigan. Now there's a uh, Charles Diggs Jr. He said he became the first black American to serve in Capitol Hill in Michigan. He was the first elected in 1954. So it says since then they had at least one black American that has represented, you know, in Congress and say a portion of Detroit, they said largest majority black city in the nation It say with civil rights leaders becoming uh, a powerful force in the democratic party in the ensuing decades. But that was set to change in 2023 in last week's primary as a black candidates failed to win either the two congressional districts representing Detroit, the 12th and 13th. It's a U.S. Representative Rashida Tlaib, which um, if you don't know who she is, this is her right here that you see on the screen. And also a uh, in the 12th, a state representative, uh, Sheree Thien- Thienater, if I'm saying his name right, uh, he is a businessman right here um, that immigrated from India. Um, they say he beat out a crowded field in the open 13th. So you have basically two immigrants representing um, places that they're not originally from. And yet black folks could not even win uh, what they represent. Now they said, because they said both the seats are safe. They said uh, both uh, Tlaib and the Nader is expected to win the November 8th general election. Now they said they, the media had talked with several sources who are discussing the possibility of a right in black candidate in the 13th congressional district, but has, uh, no plan has been announced. It said the black American leaders are grappling with the loss of black American representation for Detroit. It said both Congress and the legislator and what this means. They said we gave up power on Tuesday, according to a Reverend window, Anthony pastor, the fellowship chapel in Detroit. And he said, president of nonpartisan NAACP, you know, which is a everybody uh, coalition It's not a black people coalition. Uh, they say the church's political arms, the Fannie Lou Hamer PAC, as they support state senator Adam Holler. They say he was a Democrat uh, from the 13th. Now, at the same time, the leaders are trying to figure out what happened. With some calling out the new redistricting maps. They say lower voter turnout and a crowded field as factors. Now, let, let me say something. How, how did this happen? How did this really happen? Um, and we'll go into some things they're talking about, but you know, black people in America, this, this is the issue with, with a lot of you, you have control of an area. We're talking about Detroit. And instead of being real strategic in the area, instead of saying, you know what? Okay. Detroit is predominantly black. Let's do everything we can to address, to uh, attract the best and brightest to Detroit. Let's protect the, the politics of Detroit. Let's do everything we can to hold on to a black city. That's not nothing that we want to do. Let's call it what it is. A lot of our problem in America and why we can't get ahead and versus some of these immigrants, these immigrants come over here with a mission in mind. They don't come over here to just let all the, the white folks do the heavy lifting for them. When they come even into our communities, what do they start doing? They start buying gas stations. They start buying convenience stores. They start buying little mom and pop shops in our own communities. And we've been sitting in for 40 and 50 years, 60 years. We don't buy anything. An immigrant come over and what a lot of them do is they get with their family members and they say, you know what? We're going to buy this one convenience store, this one gas station. And you, and I've seen it. All of them, the whole family works in the freaking gas station. You see them. I remember in Port Arthur. When I would see the Vietnamese was doing that sort of thing, you would see, they wouldn't hire nobody, but it would be, you could tell it's nothing but the family members from sun up to sundown. They were working in those stores and it wouldn't end up happening. They start making money and then they go buy the next door and the next door and the next door and the next door because they'd be practicing group economics. Sure. Do they get a little leg up? Um, uh, uh with some help with the U S government. Yes. But you know what? They could have squandered that help too. Because when people talk about the U S government helping them, they could have went smoked it up. They could have went drank it up. They could have went buy all the Jordans they wanted. They could have bought all of the, 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 the freaking homes and, and, and you know, tricking. They could have did all that with the money. No different than some of us do with the money, but they came in with a mission. And a lot of times we don't have a mission and we're not even business minded enough. A lot of us to say, Hey, 
we need to go in on and make sure Detroit is protected. This needs to be a black business Mecca. We need to invite and make sure the best and brightest of black America comes over here and, and have businesses, you know, and make sure they part of the politics. We need to make sure everybody is registered to vote here and push voting here because this is how we're going to protect the black Mecca here. That's, that's what we lose it. Then we get mad when, when other groups come in and see, oh man, shoot, these black folks not doing nothing to protect their area. So man, we about to go in and, and, and take this over. See, they don't, you know, see, people don't understand and say, well, they don't go over there to white folks neighborhood because white folks make sure. And they understand we protect white areas. We protect that. So we're going to make sure all of us are voting. We're going to make sure that the majority of businesses here is going to be white owned businesses. We're going to make sure to protect that where no immigrant or anybody can come in our areas. So they look at the black areas as I'm going to hit a lick over there because they don't protect anything. I'm going to get into the politics and because black folks run around with this freaking people of color crap with other groups, not thinking like they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. People of color. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. And the whole time they're like, man, I'm trying to take over and even get you out the way. Am I mad at, 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 at Rashida Tlaib and, and this other guy? Am I mad at them? No, I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at them. I'm mad at us because we always put ourselves in a freaking position for somebody to come in and victimize. Let me tell you the way the world works. Either you're going to be, either you're going to be on top or you're going to be at the bottom. And when you're at the bottom, somebody going to victimize you. It just, point blank. That is like the law of the freaking jungle. We always look into somebody to, to, Oh, they should do this for us. Oh, this, listen, when them immigrants come in, they, ain't, well, they don't care about our story about slavery and Jim Crow. They don't care about our struggles. They can care less. They ain't thinking about that. They had nothing to do with that. All they coming in to do is, is, is get their foot in the door in America to make some money, to get some headway. And if they get political position, they going to do things for their group. And that's something that we should have been doing. You've been hold, holding that position in freaking Detroit since the 1950s. Why isn't Detroit better than what it is? See, we have all this black representation and we get nothing out of the deal. This is why a lot of black people are apathetic with, with voting. It's because you've been sitting down in those positions since the fifties in the Democrat party and nothing has been done. Now uh, people from other countries are coming to move you out the way because you ain't done nothing with it. See that nobody can move you out of the way. If you actually done something for the people, the people would actually come out and say, you know, let me make sure to vote for this brother, vote for this sister. See gone are the days or just vote for me because I'm black. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. See, at one point in time, black folks said, well, black representation matters. So, so just cause they look like me, they're going to do for me. And, 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 and I understood why they said that at the time. Listen, I get it because it should be common sense. If someone goes up there from your, from my neighborhood, then obviously they should be looking back and say, let me make sure to do what I have to do for my district and my neighborhood because Hey, my people are looking at me, but we have never in our community brought consequences for that's raccoon behavior. If you're going to go up there to Washington and you do nothing for your community, that's raccoon behavior, but you making sure to fight for immigration. You make sure to fight for uh deleting of children. You making sure to fight for LGBT, you know, you making sure to fight for everything else, but black folk. And then when black folks don't show up for you and vote, now you up here crying, talking about you're lamenting a loss for black representation in Detroit. You should have lost it. And I'm glad, I'm glad you're losing it. What's the point of having it? And y'all going to lose Detroit too. That's going to come too because y'all play too much. Every time you get a, some area in America, you play too much. You don't get politically involved. You don't try to attract the best and brightest people or the best and brightest people of Detroit. You let them leave because you're not taking care of business as you should. We talking about the mayor, the city council, all those kind of people. Not making sure you have the best schools. You're not making sure anything. You let the place go down. Then, then the folks come in and start gentrifying everything back up. Now they said the redistricting process, they said back in 2018, they had a constitutional amendment where voters passed, taking the power away from the legislators to draw new uh, maps uh, along congressional lines every 10 years and create an independent redistricting commission. 
They said Michigan lost a congressional seat due to stagnant population after the 2020 census. In other words, people left. That's another problem. If, if Detroit was being the black Mecca, it could be, you could have had black people flooding Detroit. You could have been running. You know, if you, you had Michigan, I mean, I'm sorry, Detroit in the right manner. You could have been reaching out to everybody. Hey, come move to Detroit. Hey, we got some businesses. Hey, we got grants for you. If you want to come open up a business in Detroit, Hey, we'll give you some uh, uh, money. If you want to uh, buy, you know, build your home while you and everything, bring, move your family up here. People have been leaving. There's a lot of people. I've even on the internet heard, man, I left Detroit. I went to Atlanta. I went to Houston. I went to, they've been coming to the South. So of course, when your population goes down, it affects your representation. Now they say U S representative Brenda Lawrence has said the only black American in Michigan's congressional delegation uh, sent uh, political shockwaves in January when she announced her retirement. It says she's currently representing the 14th district said a four term federal legislator and first black mayor of Southfield, Detroit suburbs slam and say the redistricting process in a wide ranging interview. They said last week, it says she noted that the strongly democratic Detroit area districts were not drawn to be minority majority and said the state's uh, reappointment process did not serve black people in the Southeast Michigan. Well, they said people are saying that we haven't been uh, without a black representation in Congress in 70 years and said, but we never had the majority in the two districts. They said, we got to fight those lines. I said shortly after it said this woman's announcement, uh, to leave who's representing, uh, who's currently congresswoman for the neighboring 13th. And now she will run in the new 12th district. And it say to leave of course, she's a former state house member. It say who was born and saying raised in Detroit It say as part of course, the squad. Um, we know who that is. Uh, says she was expected to win last week over the three black American democratic candidates in the race. Um, they had a, uh, Kelly Garrett, um, a Janice Winfrey and a Chanel Jackson. Um, she beat, you know, them out. That should have never happened. Any of that should have never happened. Black people, you know, if you was protecting, you was protecting your enclaves, these things can happen. It's just, you can say redistricting maps or whatever. No, it's your fault because 19, since 1954, you've been in Congress. Y'all been holding Detroit. Y'all should have been making sure Detroit should have been protected. Period. Once again, I'm going to repeat this. If you sit up there and allow yourself to be at the bottom, yes, now I use the word allow. Because what I know about life is that you have to allow people to do things to you. In order for you to be in a victim position, you have to allow that. Dr. Claude Anderson told us a long time ago about getting on code politically, getting on code economically. He told us that. And he told us what was going to happen if we didn't. And we're suffering the consequences of what Dr. Claude Anderson said a long time ago about us not being on code politically and economically. He said that the immigrant groups are coming and they, they come in to, to move you out of the way and take over. That, and that's what's happening. That's what's happening. See, people don't like the messages when I say, Hey, we got to look at black America for these problems because it's always, you know, we always want to say, Oh, the white man and this and that. And yeah, the white supremacy got their deal. But I told y'all a long time ago, white supremacy wouldn't be what it is without black participation folks. I'm going to repeat that again. White supremacy wouldn't be what it is without black participation. Black folks participate heavily in white supremacy in the in keeping us down. Just as much as you had Steven on the plantation and Django uh, 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 wanting a token position, but it's a token position on the plantation, making sure the plantation keeps running well. You got black folks doing the exact same thing. Your, your political class and all them, that's your boule members. That's the Stevens. They're not trying to do nothing for black folk. They try, they try to protect their token position. Like, like, uh, um, Steven on, on Django, making sure that the grassroots and anybody trying to fight for change don't come in. That's why he was, he was so pissed off at Django. Remember how pissed off he was? He was more pissed off and angry at Django than, than, uh, uh, Calvin candy was Calvin candy. Wasn't even mad. That's, that's, that's our biggest problem in, in the black community. 
We have too many Stevens running around in political positions. Don't do nothing for black folk. And other groups are coming in and say, man, I can get in when I fit in. Look at all this land. Look at this city, man. We can come in and make this little India. We can make this little Palestine. We can make this, you know, whatever group we can make this little China. And then we want to get mad. When we've been sitting up there in, in these spots for, for 60 years, 50 years, being politically lazy. Dr. Claw Anderson called us out on that too. That's why when I heard that brother say the other day, 2023, he done. He ain't speaking up no more. And I don't blame him. What, what is there more to say? If people follow what he said, read his books, and did everything the brother said to do, we wouldn't be in this position. But black folks are hard headed, black folks are stubborn. I've been told you God is not sending you no more figures like a Dr. King or Malcolm X or a minister Farrakhan. You're not getting it because you didn't had enough already. You had some of the best speeches, the most eloquent speeches, the most wise messages, the way we should move, how to reform ourselves, what we should do economically, what we should do politically, what we should do spiritually, what we should do in our family. How should we do things in education? We've had every message out there given to us and we followed that message. And I believe God sent all those people to give us that message. We are just stubborn, hard headed and stiff necked people. And this is why we are in a position that we're in. And then we look up and not willing to say, Hey, black America has a hand in some of our position too. We were so quick all the time to say, Oh, well, everything wrong with us is just, we don't point at the at white supremacy. And no, I, we can't, we can't do it. Honestly, we can't do that. We can't do it. Now, is there some of us that's trying our best? Yes. You have a small group of people that's literally holding black America together. It's a small group of people that's doing it. That's trying to keep the glue together in black America, a small group. And even that small group is getting tired of y'all. I'm talking about the majority. They're getting tired because they can't keep taking the slings and arrows, taking the hate, taking the missing opportunities, all kinds of things to try to sit up there and fight and defend you when you're going to go right in the system and participate on the plantation too. You sabotage yourself politically voting all this, this Democrat mess, you're constantly voting. You sabotage yourself economically. You, you make sure to give your money to every other group, but black people, you have no problem doing it. Black folks, they're talking about spending over a trillion dollars a year, but yet none of it stays in the black community. So it's not that we're not making money as a collective. We just don't make sure it don't stay in black hands. Hell, you don't even make sure to save no money. Something happened right now. He's like, okay, how much money you got in the bank? You know, uh, uh, those who like to spend all this money on name brands. Hey, do you have any savings? Oh, oh, do you take your savings and maybe do you invest in something? Like, do you invest? Or you wait later? You could do, are you thinking about how you're going to live in the next 10, 20 years, like a retirement? Let's say you're in your forties like me. Are you thinking about how you're going to be in the next 10 years? Are you making sure you set things up? You know, social security ain't crap. You know, you got to literally be half dead to get social security. I mean, full social security. What are you doing today? To make sure, uh, you be on with you, we should be on average. Just my opinion, you should be retiring in your fifties. Some people want to go fifty-five. I say people need to retire in early fifties, preferably fifty. But the only way you can retire at fifty, hell, some people are retiring at my age, and I've seen plenty of black people retire at my age too. Go look at them videos about you know uh, the uh, fire. It's called fire. Financial independence, retire early. That's what it means. Go look up them videos on YouTube. There's black people that's doing it. Black people. But we, but a lot of times we don't want to pay attention to them kind of black people. We'll give excuses. Like I think one of them had, I think it was talking about me on, 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 uh, um, one of them websites. And even talking about telling people about, you know, doing trips to, to the African continent, having a second address, etc. Oh, he's only one to target the upward mobility of black people. Really? I'm talking to black people. I come, I didn't come from quote unquote upward mobility. I come from the hood and everything that I've done. I got it through the mud. I've worked, you know, smart and I'm still learning and still making different moves. I had learned from my mistakes etc. even financially, because I didn't come up with all this knowledge. So that's, that's, that's no excuse because I'm telling you black folks going to be in a horrible position in this country. Horrible. It's coming. 
and I can't feel sympathy for, for anybody because we, you know, we want, we run around here talking about, we built America. We run around here talking about it. We innovated in America and that's true. But where's that building and innovation now, brother? What's that building and innovation in 2022 sister? Where is it at? I don't want to live off of just the freaking past things that we've done. I want to live off 2022 things and on. Where's that building? Where's that innovation? And that innovation benefits black America, not benefiting white folks. Where's that building that's going to innovate us? We're not, where's our building of our, our schools for our children? Where, where's those things at? That's one thing we should be building ASAP. We talk about white supremacy all day, but we send our children to be educated by white supremacy. Come on now. We got to hold our own feet to the fire about what we, we so quick to be on the internet canceling this one, canceling that one uh, because they said something we don't like. Why aren't we taking that kind of energy and building in these black cities while you still got them innovating in these black cities while you still got them because you're not going to hold it forever. Like Julius Malema said, if you're in the EFF and you, you don't have a, you're not registered to vote. You don't need to be in it because, because how, how are you going to do something politically? If we, we, you're not even registered to vote. Register. You should, uh, you should always have your driving license. You should have a voter registration card. You should have your passport and you should always have a way to protect yourself in your home. That's, that's things at minimum that you should have minimum. And nobody should have to tell you to go do that. Cause you should have free movements to travel anywhere you want to in the world. Even if it's a trip to the Caribbean, you still need a passport. We got to tighten up brothers and sisters. We got to tighten up. And I know people don't like these messages when, you know, it's easier when I talk about other people and all of that. And that's great, but we do contribute to our own destruction too. And I don't like when every message someone says like this, Oh, that's, that's kind of cool. And this, this and that. No, it's not. No, it's not. The fact is you never say that person is freaking wrong. And this Detroit situation, you got to blame black America for this. You let that city go down. You didn't attract the best, attract the best and brightest black Americans coming out of college, whatever, given, you know, y'all have control of the city and you will not give no grants for black people to go up there and you, and you a black city. To do business and everything, grants for homes. That's what a lot of countries do. If you're willing to go invest money into a country, hey man, you can have a citizenship. Hey, you can go do this and that in the third. You bringing jobs for Black America. I'm telling you, tighten up, tighten up, because the immigrants are already here. The immigrants are coming. And they're coming to get you out what you have, and it's going to be something else. So, so Detroit turned into a Palestine, little Palestine, a little India. I don't feel bad whatsoever, folks. I don't, because it's black folks in that area's own fault. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the podcast. Greatly appreciate it. Make sure you click that subscribe button uh, for you to keep up with our podcast and get some of this tough love. We got to be given some time on this platform. Click the subscribe button, at least on YouTube. That way um, you be first notified uh, when we post a podcast. So thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen, and see you on the next one.